Hi folks and welcome back. This week uh, I'm down in Wiltshire. I'm taking part in, um, in a challenge, a sort of primitive wilderness survival challenge if you like. Um, I've got very minimal kit, uh, knife, saw, billy pot, some paracord and a few sort of essential um, safety items. We all arrived at the main camp last night and spent the night there um, under tarps and uh, set out at first light for the woodland. Um, it's a huge woodland and um, we have quite a big area area at our disposal for collecting materials for building our shelters and uh, firewood but also for foraging. Um, food wise on this challenge um, we're provided with meat in the form of a deer, um, a dead deer which we need to butcher and divide up between the people in the group. There are four people in my group obviously today fresh meat that's good um, but then the meat will need to be dried um, to preserve it for the for the remainder of the of the challenge. We had a bit of a walk in to get to the wo woodland this morning a couple of miles. I haven't eaten anything since last night there was no breakfast or anything this morning it's part of the challenge. It's about uh, nine o'clock now and um, there is heavy rain forecast for about two o'clock this afternoon so pressure is on. I need to get somewhere dry, I need to make a shelter, I need to thatch it um, but most importantly I need to get a fire going and I think actually that's going to be my first priority this morning before I even get the shelter finished. I might just make a start on it, um, get some basic poles up for the shape and then um, that will determine where my fire is going to go. This is a, a hazel coppice this woodland so loads and loads of hazel and um, as I'm sure you know um, hazel benefits from being coppiced so I'm going to take poles, they are live poles from, from the tree but it doesn't do the tree any harm. Obviously cutting all my poles from one stand of hazel wouldn't be a good idea but um, there are so many stands about I can, uh, I can be selective and cut poles that will suit my needs. I've made a very basic start. I've kind of got the the shape that I wanted. Lean to, just a simple lean to. I do need to make a bed, uh, a raised bed in there. So before I get too carried away and fill that all in, um, I need to do that. Uh, otherwise it's very difficult to drive the stakes into the ground to hold the bed together. Um, but actually, before I do any of that, I want to get a fire going. Time is pressing on and um, as I said earlier, that is the priority today. I collected a bit of tinder on the walk-in today. Um, there was some dry grasses that had been dry, dried by the wind, um, which I picked up and I've got some dry bracken as well. Uh, I've also got a little bit of birch bark, but it is quite wet. So I'll, I'll scrape it and see if I can do anything with that. But um, I just need to get some firewood collected, uh, make some feather sticks just to help things go. And uh, yeah bow drill. <laughs> if any of you have watched my previous videos with attempts at bow drill you know it's not my strong point. I'm going to go for hazel on hazel because that's what I've had success with in the past and there's loads of it here. I just need to find a nice dry bit of uh, dead standing for my spindle. It's nice and straight about inch thick just under an inch thick and um, a bit that I can split into a half board and um, yeah we'll try and get we'll try and get fire lit.
I'm really happy to have uh, got my fire going. It uh, took quite a bit of effort. Uh, I just, um, I was getting loads of powdery material, you know, um, but it just wasn't, I, could, I wasn't getting it into an ember. And it took me three notches <laughs> before I uh, got that final elusive little bad boy. Got my fire going, so I'm absolutely thrilled. I've obviously got a lot to do on the uh, shelter still. I've just been cut cutting some components for my raised bed, um, but I need to stop what I'm doing now and head down. There's, a, there's like a central area at the bottom of this woodland um, where our food ration is. There is a deer sitting down there um, and hand washing facilities after we've butchered it. And uh, as a group, we're gonna meet up um, in a few minutes and um, we're gonna butcher that deer. I'm not gonna film that. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, and you know, if you wanna watch, um, if you wanna watch stuff on butchery, there's loads of videos on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm just gonna, I will, um, I will show you the finished product. <laughs> a great big pile of meat, hopefully, enough to last me, uh, last me the rest of this, um, this challenge. The water source is right down at the bottom of the wood as well, where the, where the deer carcass is. There's a bit of a trek down there and then a trek back up again. So I thought I might as well uh, save collecting water until I go down to do the deer. So I'm really looking forward to getting that done, getting back up here and getting some water onto boil so I can have a drink because I'm, I'm really thirsty. It's, it's about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon um, and I haven't had anything to drink since last night. So I am, as you can imagine, pretty thirsty. We had a big walk in. I've been busy out collecting wood, cutting, um, doing physical stuff and sweating. So I've been, you know, losing precious uh, fluid. I need to replace it. So I've got my meat. The bowl I've got to return, unfortunately. <laughs> there is a couple of things down there for, to help us with butchering. There were some bowls and some cutting boards and things like that, and um, means to wash our hands. But there we go, that is my portion. That is a, a quarter of the, of the deer. It was a small roe deer, quite small, but enough for four of us. And that's obviously got to last um, for the whole challenge. Um, in here, I've got this piece here, which is one of the, the back steaks. Um, I'm gonna have that for my dinner tonight. And then the rest of this, I'll jerky. So I'll cut that up really thinly later on. I'll make a drying rack over the fire and um, dry it all so I can use it for the rest of the week. Also collected some water while I'm down there. So I'm gonna get this on to boil now so I can have a well needed drink of tea. either this <clears throat> I just want to gulp it down but of course it's boiling water 
Yeah, I'm definitely dehydrated. Hunger-wise, I feel all right, actually. Yeah, I had a handful of blackberries on the walk on the way in, which was lovely. Really, really super sweet and ripe. And then I've just had um, hazelnuts. I've had quite a few hazelnuts. <laughs> and they've been keeping, uh, keeping my hunger at bay a little bit, actually. Which is good, yeah. I'd get this drunk. And then um, I really need to get this shelter finished off. Well, as you can hear, it is peeing down and um, my shelter isn't very watertight. Uh, it's better than not being in it, but uh, it is dripping and making me wet. So uh, it obviously needs a lot more. I knew it did anyway. Um, it's just, I could only get done what I could do in the time I had. Oh, that's really good. Well, this rain is just getting worse. <laughs> I'm wet, uh, my shelter leaks, um, all my jerky is getting wet. But I'm gonna need to put the camera away because uh, the camera is also getting wet. I think it's gonna be a long night. Because my shelter leaks. It needs more work. It's dark now, there's not a lot I can do about it. I just need to hunker down. There's no blankets or sleeping bags or anything like that allowed on this challenge. It's just literally the clothes I'm in and my fire. And um, hope for the best. But the venison was really good. I've just uh, drank that whole billy can of water and feeling really good for that. Yeah, so I'm going to sign off for tonight and I'll uh, see you guys in the morning. Good night.
morning folks. I've uh, just been out for a little walk this morning to gather some bits to have for breakfast. I, um, I saved some of the deer meat, some of the venison last night when I, when I was uh, making the jerky and put it in the pot with some water and stewed it up last night. So it was just uh, ready to heat back through this morning with some fresh bits and pieces. So I've just put some blackberries and some nettles in there just to just to give it a bit of something else <laughs> and a bit of flavour. Hopefully the blackberries, the flavour of the blackberries will go into the water, which would be lovely. Give it a bit more flavour. Um, I slept reasonably well. The the heavy rain we had last night um, sort of petered off by about I don't know 10 o'clock last night, I suppose. Um, and although the rain stopped, the shelter carried on dripping for some time afterwards because it was wet, obviously. Um, but yeah, once once that rain had stopped, I managed to dry out just from the heat of the fire. I kept the fire going all night, so I was up every every hour or two, just um, stoking the fire and putting some more wood on. But that's the way it is, you know. When you um, when you haven't got any any insulation, that's what you've got to do, you know. But um, despite that, I still feel quite rested this morning. But um, I am in need of some food and uh, and something to drink. There is more rain, unfortunately, due today. Later on, heavy rain again. Um, so I really need to plug up the gaps in this in this shelter in the thatch, get some more bracken on it, get some more leaf litter on it, and um, try and make it a bit more comfortable. I also need to get more firewood. Um, I didn't quite get through all my firewood that I collected from last night, but there's not a lot left, so I'm going to have to have a a bit of a firewood collecting session this morning and um, if I can get those those two things done I'll be happy. I might go and do some foraging this afternoon then so I can make a nice stew this evening with some of the jerky and, um, and whatever wild edibles I can find. The jerky came out really well um, I just left that left that on there I kept turning it every um, every couple of hours on the on the rack and uh, once that rain had stopped, it had a chance to properly dry out and it's it's done quite well actually, I'm pleased with it. I think one or two bits, are, there's still a bit of moisture in them, but I'll pick those out and eat those ones first. But yeah, that is that is it. I'm going to make some fruit leather as well. Um, there's a, a big hawthorn bush, huge hawthorn bush down at the bottom of this woodland and it's absolutely laden with fruit. Um, so I'm going to make a fruit leather. It's quite easy to do with hawthorn. There's so much pectin in it, it kind of naturally wants to set anyway. And then I can finish off the drying on my rack that I dried the, the venison on. So I'm just going to put these in my billy pan, my billy pot, stalks and all, 
it doesn't really matter. So there you go, I've got about half a billy can there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water in, not a lot. And then it's just a matter of getting your hands in there and squishing it all up. Until you've got something that sort of resembles that. A sort of horrible gooey mess. Seeds, stalks, skin, the lot. Now the idea is with this is that you spread it out as thinly as possible so it dries. So you need something to spread it on. I'm going to use my dry bag which I use to carry all my gear in. I'm just going to squeeze it through the mesh and scrape off all of the sort of flesh, if you like, that comes through and spread it out on this bag. I don't suppose this is going to make very much, but we'll see. Well, the effort of going to get all that bracken earlier on and um, putting a load more thatch on the shelter has paid off. It is absolutely hossing it down with rain, really heavy. And yes, there are some drips in places. There's one just dripping down here, but um, it's a lot better than it was yesterday, definitely. Absolutely, definitely. Yeah, it's quite cosy in here and the fire helps as well, you know, just having heat right there. You know, last night I was wet and uncomfortable, but I stayed pretty warm on the whole. Well, I'm just back from a long walk. Um, I've been out a couple of hours and walked quite a long way using up valuable energy that I haven't really got <laughs> in an attempt to try and find some stuff to eat to supplement the um, venison and the stuff that I can forage for local to where I am. But what I was really after was dandelion and this is all I managed to get. Dandelion root is packed full of carbohydrate um, and my plan was to put some in a stew this evening just to give me a bit of energy. Um, but 
yeah, that's all I found. It's better than nothing, but it wasn't worth the effort. I used up way more energy finding these and digging them up than I did actually, um, you know, what then I'll get from them. Um, I did, however, come across a whole load of acorns, um, which I'm going to process into a flower. Now, acorns aren't edible as they are. They're just too full of tannin, way too bitter. Um, and the problem we have here is that there's no running water in this woodland or no natural water source at all, um, apart from the, the, the small artificial pond, which you saw me filling up from before. Um, so I wouldn't be able to leach those tannins out of the acorns being in this woodland. So Joe, who runs the course, who runs this challenge, has um, offered to take them away and leach them. I need to crack the shells off, so I need to roast them, crack the shells, um, and pound them up into a, into a mush. And then he'll take them away and he'll leach them, changing the water, and then he'll give them back to me leached as if I had been able to do it in a, in a stream or a river, which I can't do because there isn't one. You see what I mean? So it's not really cheating. Uh, you know, if, if I really was a hunter-gatherer, I would be staying somewhere where there was a water source, you know. But um, obviously Joe is limited to where he can run the course and there isn't one here. So um, that's just the way it is. These are the dandelions that I picked earlier. And all I'm gonna do is just cut the greenery off and put that to one side. And the roots, I'm just gonna roast a bit. There isn't a lot of it, <laughs> but it is calories. And they're carbohydrates which I haven't had any of for two days. And add them in as well. And I'll just put that on to boil. Hopefully that lovely smoky flavor from smoking it will come out into the, into the stew as well, which would be good, give it a bit of extra flavor. While the stew's doing, I'm just gonna carry on um, peeling these acorns. So like I said earlier, I've given them a, a roasting by the fire, just cause that makes it a lot easier to take the shells off. It's still not easier to take them off, but it does help. And then just giving them a bash with a, with a rock. There's also like a membrane on here, which is really, really bitter. That's got to come off as well, but I'm going to scrape that off with a knife later on. There we go, I've got about a third of a billy can, I suppose, of, well, acorn meal, I suppose you'd call it. There are still a few lumps in there, a few stubborn bits that wouldn't break. I have no idea whether that's milled down enough. Probably not. <laughs> but um, I'm knackered, so I'm gonna get myself ready for Ready for sleeping, I'm gonna put my wool shirt on underneath this one 
um, and uh, just have a little bit of a tidy up here and get some sleep. Unfortunately, the wind has changed directions and it's really gusty. I don't know whether you can hear behind me in the trees. Um, and it's blowing right into the shelter. So I'm just gonna be getting all that smoke while I sleep, which is not good. But I'm gonna roll over so that my back is to the fire rather than my face. And hopefully that'll help a bit. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. that massive great big branch just here has just fallen out the trees from up there and just crashed to the ground that's where it hit look there there's my shelter oh.